In most cases, when building a web app, you're going to need some form of authentication. You're going to need a way for users to log in, to register, and to log out. So in this video lesson, we are going to go over creating a simple PHP login script, similar to what you see in front of you, where you can click on login, and you could simply enter in an email and a password and then you'll be logged in and then you can also log out and you can also register for an account and that's what we'll be going over in this video so let's get started okay so we're going to start off from scratch just so I can show you how everything pieces together so we're going to create a new folder on the desktop and we are just going to name this auth and this is where our PHP login script is going to live and I'm going to drag this into my favorite text editor and I'm using sublime text I'm going to create a new file and I will call this index.php and in this file, I'll want to add a basic HTML structure, and I will give it a title of Welcome to Your Web App. Okay, and then we'll probably also want to add a header, so I'll add an H1, and I will say in here, please log in or register. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and save that file. And I'm using MAMP, so I'm going to want to point a virtual server, virtual host, to this directory. So I will open up MAMP, and I will create a new virtual host. I'm going to call this auth, and I will also create a new alias and call this auth.dev. So when we put in auth.dev in our browser, it is going to point to this folder. Okay, and then I'll start my web server. And as soon as this starts up, then we'll open up Chrome, and you can see that we have our basic index.php file. So let's go ahead and open this up and go to auth.dev. And sure enough, we have our please log in or register on the page. And it's not too pretty right now, but we're going to go ahead and change that. So I will add some styles to the page. So I'm going to add a link to a style.css. And I'll want to create a new folder. And I'm going to call this folder assets. And then inside of that assets folder, I'm going to create another folder and call this CSS. And inside that CSS, I will put the style.css. Okay, so we'll give the body a margin of zero pixels and a padding of zero pixels. Okay, so let's save that as style.css. And another thing that I will want to do is I'm going to want to add a Google font to the page just so that way it looks a little nicer. And I think the font that I'm going to look for is called Comforta, uh, Comfort AA. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, but we'll, we'll look it up right now. Okay, so let's search for that font, C-O-M-F-O-R-T-A-A. -A. Okay, and we can just go ahead and click on the quick use, so that way we can copy and paste the link into our HTML page. And we'll paste that in. Okay, then we'll save, and then inside of our body, we will want this to be the main font. So if I go back to the page, I can just copy and paste the font family and put that in my CSS file. Okay, and then I'll also align my text at the center. Okay, so I will save that, reload the page, and nothing happens. Okay, and that's because we need to actually say where the CSS file is, assets slash CSS slash style.css. So if I refresh that page, now we have the text aligned to the center and the nice font on the page. And the next step that we'll probably want to do is create a login and register button. So I'm just going to add an ahref to login.php, and it will just say login, and then we can say or, and then we'll also create a register link, register.php and register. Okay, and we'll go ahead and save that. And then we'll also need to create our login.php file. So I will save this and save it as login.php. Okay, and then we'll create another HTML basic structure and I will give this a title of login below. Okay, and we'll save that, then we'll go back to the browser and refresh. You can see that we have our login or register buttons here with our header text. So let's go ahead and uh, click on the login button, 
and you can see that we have the login below in the title and we can go back and click on the register and it's going to give us a not found because we haven't created that page yet. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's create a new file and save this as register.php. Okay, and then we'll do the same. We'll create a basic HTML structure page and call this register below. And we'll also want to give it a header in this one, so a h1, and we'll write in here register And then we'll also want to add this to our login.php page. And we'll probably want to link to the style sheet and the fonts in both of the login and the register.php. So we'll copy those style sheets and paste them in here. Okay, this actually shouldn't be register. This should be login here. And let's see in register. Okay, yeah, we have register there. Okay, and the next thing that we'll want to do is create the form. So we will create a new form, and we want this form to post to login.php. So we'll say that action equals login.php, and we actually want this form to post to the page, so we will give it a method of post. Okay, and inside of here, we are going to add our input, like for our input for our email and our input for our password. So uh, we're also going to go ahead and give this a placeholder. So we're going to say placeholder equals, and then we'll just type in here, enter your email. Okay, and we'll give it a name of email. And we'll do the same here. And we'll say a type equals password. And we'll give it a placeholder and we'll say here and password. And the name of this will be password. And finally, we are going to need a submit button. So we'll do input type equals submit. And I'm gonna save this and reload the page. So if we click on the login, you can see that we have like a basic login page. It doesn't look that great, uh, but we'll go ahead and change that. So let's go back into the style.css file and we want the input type of text and we also want the input type of password okay and let's change the styles up a little bit let's give it an outline of none we don't want to have that annoying blue outline and we'll do a padding of 10 pixels and we'll get display block We'll say a width of 300 pixels and a border radius of three pixels. And we want kind of like a light border, so we'll do one pixel solid EEE. -E -E. So it's kind of like an off-white border. And we'll give it a margin of 20 pixels and auto, and we'll save that and reload the page. And that looks quite a bit nicer. So we probably also want to add some styles to the submit button, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll do input type equals submit. So for the submit button, we want to have a padding of 10 pixels. We want the color to be white. So this will be the color of the text in the button. And we want the background to be kind of like a nice sky blue. Okay, and let's give it a width of 320 pixels. And we want a margin of 20 pixels. And let's do a margin top of zero. And we also want a border of zero pixels. But we do want a border radius of three pixels so it doesn't have square corners. We want to make sure that the cursor is set to pointer. So when we hover over the button, then it gives us the nice cursor. And it looks quite a bit nicer. So we have our email, our password, and our submit button in there. So let's also add a little hover effect once we hover over the submit button. So it looks a little bit nicer. Okay, so we'll take this background and we'll kind of just lighten it up. So we'll do 0, 0, B, and E. So let's reload. Okay, and we need to add the hover method. So let's hover that and now it has that lighter blue color. Okay, and one other thing that we probably want to do since we're on the login page, we want to have a way to get back to the home page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a simple header so that way you could click on the logo and then go back to the home page. So let's go ahead and 
go back into our login.php and above here we want to add a div class let's say header okay and then we also want to have a link in here so that'll go back to the home page and just give this uh, your app name let's format that a little bit nicer okay and we'll save and reload and it doesn't have too much style so let's go ahead and change that so for the header we want this to have a border bottom of one pixel solid it'll be kind of like an off-white color so we want it to have a padding of 10 pixels zero pixels and a width of 100 percent and we want to align the text to center so let's go ahead and save and reload and it looks quite a bit nicer I don't like the underline in the logo so let's go ahead and change that so if we say header a tag and we want to have a color of let's give it a dark gray and then we want the text decoration to be none okay let's reload that and it looks quite a bit nicer okay so now we can go back to the home page and then we have our login and our register here so we can simply go back to the home page and we want to have this header across every page so I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste that into each of the files so I will just copy this and paste that into our home page right now and same with the register page okay so if we reload this now we can get back to our home page we click on the login we can get to the login page we can go back to the home we can then click on the register and then we can go back home if we would like I'm also going to add some links so that way if you're on your login page you can get to the uh, registration page and vice versa if you're on the registration page you can get back to the login page so under the login header here I am going to add see an a tag actually we'll probably want to say give it a span so we can say or and then add the link here so we want it to link to the register.php we could say register here so it'll say login or register here and we'll go ahead and save that and then we'll also add this to the register page except we'll change this to login and login here so if I save that and reload then we have a you know we can get to our registration page from the login so this is login or register here and we have register or login here so we can kind of just bounce back and forth between these two forms okay so let's go ahead and test out our login page right now if I were to enter an email at email.com and then a password and I press enter nothing's gonna happen because we're actually just submitting to the same page and we don't have any action to show anything different it's basically just reloading the page but we're gonna change that so we're gonna say if we receive a post message then we can do something different from there so in our login.php we can at the top open up our PHP tags and then in here we can catch whenever we have a form submitted with a with a post so whether it's an email and a password so right now I could simply echo and I could say dollar sign underscore post so email and then I'm gonna go ahead and just kill the script from there so if I reload the page right now cancel this so if I reload that let me see okay yeah it's actually not even it's just gonna give us a blank page because we don't have anything underscore uh, inside of uh, email so we actually need to say if this exists if it's set then we can go ahead and echo it so let's go ahead and say if and we'll say not empty so if this is not empty which means that it does not contain basically nothing in the text box or it, basically it is set so we're saying if it is not empty then we can go ahead and print it out and then kill the script from there so I'll save that and reload the page and now if we type in email at email.com and it doesn't matter if we enter anything in the password because we're not doing anything with that so we can click on submit and you can see that sure enough once the script said okay we received this post and now we can uh, print out the email and then we're gonna go ahead and kill the script so that's exactly what happened right there and this is what's gonna happen once the user logs in we are going to say okay we received their email we received their password and now we can go ahead and verify if those are correct so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if the email is not empty and we also want to make sure that the password is not empty as well
Okay, so we say if the email and the password are not empty, that means that the user just submitted the form, so they are trying to log into their account. So from there, then we will need to basically query the database, and then we will need to check if the user's email and password is correct. But before doing that, we're actually going to go over to the register file because we want to be able to register a new user, and then after we register the new user, then we'll want to add the functionality to the login page. So I'm going to use the form that we are using in the login.php, and I'll just copy and paste this into the register here. And then I'm going to change up a few things. So we want it to post to the register.php file. And we have our password here, and then we probably also want a confirm password. So we can call this one confirm underscore password. So we can say enter your email and password, and then we can say confirm password. Okay, and since we have that form in place, then we are going to want to enter that new user email and password into the database after this form gets submitted. So at the top of the page, we're gonna go ahead and open up our PHP tags, and then we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna say if the email and the password is not empty, then we want to go ahead and insert this into the database. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this if statement, and I'm going to paste it in here. So we say if the email and the password are not empty, then we want to enter the new user in the database. Okay, and if you don't have a new database yet, then you can go ahead and create a new database. We're using SQL Pro here, and I'm going to go ahead and connect to my local host. And I currently do have a table here called users and a, a database called auth. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this database and then I will show you creating it like as if we haven't had that database before. So I'm going to say that we want to add a new database. So I'm going to say database, add database, and this is database is going to be called auth. We go ahead and add that and we are going to add a new table and we're going to call this users table. I'm going to say I want this to be UTF-8 and I'm going to add that. So we are automatically have an ID and this is gonna be the user's unique ID. And the next field that we want is an email address and we want this to be a varchar of, let's say 250 characters max. Uh, we don't want to allow null and then we'll also do the same with the password. So the password will be a varchar of, we'll just say 200 on this one. And the same with this, we don't want that to be null. So we just created our database that's called auth and then we have our database table, which is called users, where we will be storing our users' information and we will also be verifying their credentials in this database. So we need to connect to the database through our script. So let's go ahead and set some variables. We are going to set the, the server. So our server is localhost. And if you're using MAMP or any other localhost version, and a lot of even web servers just use the server called localhost. So this is pretty common of the server that you're going to be using. We'll say username. So my username is just root. And the password is the same. The password is root. And then our database, which is the database that we just created, is called auth. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to do a one, we're going to want to do a try catch block. So we're going to say if we try to connect to the database, if we don't, then basically throw an exception or throw an error because if we can't connect to the database, then obviously we can't perform any kind of uh, functionality from there. Okay, so we have, we want to catch this error, and then we will simply exit the script and we will say that connection failed, and then we'll also print out the message. So we can say e get message. So I'm going to save this. And what we're going to be using is it's called a PDO. So it's a PDO connection. You can usually do uh, MySQL connections and there are also MySQL I connections. Uh, but PDO now is kind of the new standard and it is the most secure way of doing database transactions using PHP. So I'm going to create a new variable and I'm going to call this con and basically standing for a connection. So I'm going to say new PDO. We're going to say MySQL and the host is going to equal server. And in order to for these variables to be processed in this string, we need to give it a double quote instead of single quote. So we'll go ahead and change that. So we have server, and then we need database name equals, say, database. 
And then next we need to pass it the username and the password. So let's go ahead and try this out. Go ahead and reload that page. So let's go back to the register page. Okay, yeah, we're seeing the default register page here. But let's go ahead and change, say, the database. So we don't have a database called Auth2. So let's save that and try reloading. Yeah, if we try reloading, it's going to say unknown database Auth2. So that makes sense because we don't have a database with that name. So we can tell that our database has successfully connected. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this into a separate file. And I'm just going to call this database.php because we'll probably want to use this in our other, our register, our login, and even our index.php file. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this in and save that as database.php. I'll need to make sure that I open and close my PHP right there. And I will save that. And then in our register, we're just going to say require database.php. So let's go ahead and reload the page and make sure everything's working fine. Now let's change the database again and reload. Okay, it looks good because we just changed the database name to something that doesn't exist and it, give, it gave us an error. So we can go ahead and reload that page and everything is set up fine. So now we have the database connection. Uh, we have uh, checks to see if the email and the password have been posted. And then we can go ahead and put the email and the password into the database. So let's construct our query. We're going to create a variable and just call it SQL. And this is going to be our query to insert that user into the database. So we'll say insert into users because that's the table name that we created. So we want to insert email and password. So we want to say insert email and password and the values that we want to insert. We are going to give these what are called parameters and then we can bind the correct value to it. So what we'll do is it'll be a colon, you'll say email, and then we'll do colon password. And this is going to prevent from SQL injection. It's basically a secure way of inserting stuff into your database. So that is our query. We have our SQL and then we also need to create a statement. And we're going to say that we want our connection because that's what we this is the name of the variable that we created in our database.php file. So we want to say prepare this SQL statement. And then we want to bind our email and our password to this query. So we would say statement find param. So we're going to say where we find the email, we are going to insert the dollar sign underscore post email. And then we'll also want to do the same with the password. However, we do want to hash the password. And uh, we can use this, do this pretty easily if you're using a uh, PHP 5.4 uh, and above or 5.5 and above using the uh, password hash function. So what we can use is just a predefined function that we can call, which is password underscore hash. And there are multiple different kinds of hashes that we can use. And we're going to use a hash called uh, password bcrypt. OK, so we went ahead and bound these parameters. And now we need to execute the statement. So we're, we're going to wrap this in an if statement. So we're going to say if statement execute and this will give us a true or false whether or not the data got inserted correctly and we know that the user has been successfully added so we say if that statement executed correctly then we're just gonna uh, kill the script and say success we're gonna say else fail okay so let's go ahead and save that and let's go ahead and test out our register file. Okay, and it looks like we may have a few problems in here. And this looks like that's where we need to add the dollar sign in front of that. Let's reload the page. Okay, it looks good now. So let's go ahead and add our email. So let's say our email is admin at admin.com and our password, password. And then we go ahead and submit. And we get a message that says success. So if we go back into our SQL database and I go to content, now you can see that we have our admin at admin.com and you can see that our password is this crazy looking key which means that it got hashed correctly and uh, that's the way that you want to store users passwords because 
nobody should be able to look in the database and see what their password was. And then whenever we go ahead and log in the user, we can use a password verify function to make sure that the passwords are correct. So if you see, we went ahead and created a new user, so our register function is working correctly. So let's go ahead and create a message and say successfully created new user. Because after we sign up for an account or register for an account, we probably just don't want to get a page that says success. We probably want to provide that message to the user in a nicer fashion. So we're going to say if the statement does not execute, then we want to say, sorry, there must have been an issue creating your account. Okay, and then let's go ahead and just create an empty variable right here because then inside of our code we're going to want to say if this is em if it's not empty then we have a message and we want to display that message so we'll say if not empty our message so if that is not empty then we want to go ahead and print that out on the page Okay, so I'm going to save that and I'm going to go ahead and reload the page and then we'll see if we can get our nicer looking message on here. So I'll say email123 at email.com, password, password. And you'll also want to verify that the uh, regular password and the confirmed password match. Uh, but in this case, we kind of just wanted to show you the functionality for logging and registering and logging out. So you, there are plenty of other validation errors that you will have to check for. But if we go ahead and click on submit, then now we have a nicer message and it says successfully created your new user. If we go into SQL Pro, we refresh it. Sure enough, we have two new users in our database. Okay, so now let's get to logging in our users. So let's go ahead and go to our login.php file. And we're going to want to add some similar functionality. Basically, once the user submits their email and password, then we want to check in the database. We want to check if those credentials match. So what we'll want to do is to require our database.php because we're going to need a database connection in this file. I'm going to require that and then I'm going to create a new variable and call this records. And this is where we're going to store our record that we get from the database. So if we have an email and password from the user, so the user posted the login form, we're going to say that we want to prepare a statement. So we want to select ID email password from our users table we want to say where email equals and again we're going to use this uh, data parameter and call this colon email so then we'll need to bind that parameter to to our query so we'll say records bind param we'll say where we find email we are going to want to bind it with the posted email address that the user submitted and then we can just simply call records execute and then we're going to want to store the results and we're going to want to say a records and then we need to fetch the records so records fetch and we're going to use this constant just called pdo fetch associative so this is going to basically uh, fetch the email address or the record where the user's email address matches what has been posted so we will want to say if we count the results and it is greater than zero. And then we also want to verify the password. So we can say, we can use this helper function that's called password verify. And then we're going to pass the password that the user has submitted. So that is the post password with the results. So the results password. So we're basically saying if there is a record, if there is a result, and the password matches, then we know that the user has successfully been authenticated, and we can log them in. So I'm going to go ahead and just 
exit the script and say we have a login. And then I'm going to say else statement and we'll just go ahead and quit the query and then we'll say that there has been an error logging the user in. So let's go ahead and save that and go back to our login. And it looks like we're getting an error here. So let's go through the code and see what could be the problem. Okay, that was simple enough. But there's it's always the little small things that uh, get you caught up sometimes. So let's go ahead and log in with admin at admin.com and password as password and go ahead and click on submit. And then sure enough, we have a login. So we just went ahead and verified that that email and the password match. Let's go ahead and try something else. So if I say admin at admin.com and then I just say ASDF, ASDF, and I click on submit, then it's gonna say there's been an error because it did not correct, the, the person did not enter in the correct email address. And you could always write a better message and say, you know, user did not supply correct uh, password, or you could always give them a more descriptive error message. But right now we just wanted to confirm that that worked. And after the user has logged in, what we wanna do is we wanna create what's called a session. So a session is basically a variable that gets stored on the user's uh, computer. It gets stored via server side too. So it's like a session that's connected between the server and the user's session, the users like Chrome or uh, Safari window that's open. So what we want to do is we want to store this in a session so we can, whenever we move from page to page, we can say if this session exists, then the user is still logged in. So I'm going to go ahead and say session user ID and equals and results ID. And one thing that whenever you're using sessions at the beginning of your PHP script, you always want to say session start. So this is just something you need in order to use sessions in your PHP code. At the beginning, you'll always need to say session start, and then you can use sessions anywhere in your script. So after we have set that session, let's go ahead and redirect the user to the home page. So we'll go ahead and redirect them after they have successfully logged in. And if they have not, then we'll probably want to do the same thing. We'll want to give a message and say, Sorry, those credentials do not match. Okay, and we also probably want to give another message here, just an empty variable. And down here, we'll want to add our message. If it exists, then we want to display it on the screen. So if there is in fact an error with the user logging in, then they can, it, do, it just doesn't reload the page. It reloads the page and it shows this error message so, so that they know they have entered in some uh, incorrect information. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that and we will try logging in again. Okay, so after we've logged in, we've successfully logged in, but our homepage still shows the same thing. And that's because we need to actually say, does this session exist? So if this session exists, we're gonna show a different message on the homepage. So I'm gonna go back to our index page and I'm gonna go ahead and open up PHP. And since we're using sessions, I will need to add session underscore start again. Okay, and down here in the code, I'm gonna say if dollar sign underscore session user ID. So I'm gonna say if this is set, then we know that the user has been logged in. We're gonna say else the user has not logged in, so we wanna show them the please log in or register message. So I'm gonna say welcome, and then I will just say you are successfully logged in. 
So I'm going to save that and we'll reload the page. And now we have that message because you can see that the user is logged in and we do have that session. So we're saying, welcome, you are successfully logged in. So I'm also going to create a logout button. Say, I'm going to have this go to logout.php. So I'll say logout question mark. And then we'll want to create a new file and just call this logout.php. So since we're going to use sessions again, we'll need to say session start. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use a session underscore unset, which means that we want to unset all the current sessions. And we'll also want to say session destroy. And that'll just make sure that all the sessions are unset and all these sessions are completely removed. And then we want to go ahead and redirect to the home page. So we'll go ahead and save that, reload this page, and then we'll click on the logout page and it'll redirect us. It'll remove those sessions and then it'll redirect us back to the home page. And we have please log in or register because it doesn't show that we are currently registered. So now we can go back to our login or our register page. And then you can see just how easy it is to authenticate the user. Um, one thing that I'm going to do is say if we are logged in, we go to admin at admin.com then we enter in our password. So now if I'm here, I shouldn't be able to go back to the login.php. So it should automatically know that I'm logged in and it should redirect me back to the home page. And same with the register. I shouldn't be able to visit any of these pages because I'm already logged in. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to redirect if we are already logged in. So after the session start, I'm going to say if is set. So if the session is set, So user ID. So if it is set, then we know that the user is logged in. So we can go ahead and redirect them to the home page. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this into the register. And the register will also need to add the session start. And just as a note, I will have all this code posted below. I'll also have a GitHub repo that you can check it out. You could download it so you could add these files. You could simply uh, fork the repo if you wanted to or download all the files and then have it on your local machine. So let's go ahead and save that. And I'm going to reload the register page and it detects that I'm logged in. So it just went ahead and redirected me back to the home page. Same with if I go to the login.php file it's just going to redirect me back to the home page. But now if I log out, I can then go to the login page and I can also go to the register page. So there may be one last thing that you're thinking is how do we get the user's email address and their password? So if we logged in, right now it just says welcome, you are successfully logged in. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to connect to the database and we'll need to get the user where the user ID equals our session user ID and then we will have the user object on our page. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that real quick. Okay, so inside of the index.php file, we are going to want to require our database. So we required the database and now we're going to say if the session is set. So if the user ID is set, then we know that we have a current user and we can go ahead and look in the database and find that user. This way we can use it anywhere throughout our page. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to do the same command or the same query that we used in our register page. So we'll need to create a variable of our records and we'll need to prepare a new statement. So we'll say that we'll prepare, and I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this from the register because it is going to be the same. Okay, that's actually the same as the login. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and move that in here. So we want to say, uh, we want to select the ID, the email, and the password from users, and we want to say where the ID is equal to this ID. And then we'll want to bind our parameter. So we'll say records bind param and we'll say where the ID is equal to the session ID here. So the user ID. So we're going to say 
where that user ID is equal in this database, then go ahead and give us the user object. So let's execute this statement. And the same as in the login, we're going to fetch the results. And we're going to say if count results. So if we did get back a user, then we're going to go ahead and set a user variable equal to the results. And I'm also going to create a user variable up here and just call this null. So that way if we do not receive a result in the database, the user is set to null, which means that something happened and we don't have a user authenticated. Okay, so down here, instead of saying is set under dollar sign underscore session user ID, we're going to say is set dollar sign user, or we can actually just say if dollar sign user because if it doesn't exist, it's just going to give us null and it's not going to be displayed on the page. Maybe I'll say if not empty user, then we have the user object. So we could say welcome, and I could say user email. So we're kind of saying welcome, and then it'll be admin at admin.com. Let's go ahead and format this a little bit. And I know break tags aren't the prettiest thing, but I'm kind of just going along just to show you uh, the whole process and kind of make it look a little bit nicer. And Just with the time constraint, I'm just going to display it that way. So let's go ahead and reload the page. And if you see on the screen now it says, uh, welcome admin at admin.com, you are successfully logged in. So you can see that we basically authenticated the user, we got the user object, and now we can use the user object anywhere inside of the page. So I can go ahead and log in, log out now. And if I log in with the other one, email123 at email.com and password. So if I log in with that one, now it went to the database, it found that user and it's saying, uh, welcome email123 at email.com. So it's, it is showing that user on the screen. So that is it. That's how you can create your own PHP login script. And uh, if some of it didn't quite make sense, uh, go ahead and leave a question in the comments below. And uh, you can go ahead and watch the video again as much as you need. And you can also feel free to download the code below. And I hope this helped you out and I will talk to you soon.